and welcome to the online school's very first podcast. I'm Carl uh, and I handle the academics, the content development and the project development of the online school. And I'm Tudor and I look after fundraising, um, ops management and partnerships uh, development. So we're here today to discuss uh, our journey, what made us think to start building an online school, how it's been going and what our vision is for the project as a whole. So to start with, Tudor, tell us a little bit about your background, how you got into education, how did you start building an online school? Well, funny, funny one, this one, because I, I never really saw myself being in education and you know this very, very well because I, I talk about it a lot, uh, although I spent the last 10 years of my life um, in, in education, it was never really my, my dream until it, it kind of became this. Um, so yeah, essentially after, after I finished university, I, I just knew that I wanted, I wanted to start a business, but I, I didn't really know what that business would, uh, would be. So it kind of, it kind of happened. I just jumped to the first, the first opportunity that I, that I had met this guy from, from China that I was renting a room from in, um, in Birmingham at the, at the time. Um, and he could not register a company in the UK because of his visa situation. So he suggested this to me. And as you know, as it happened, it was an education company that he wanted to start specifically an, an education consultancy, bringing students from China, placing them in universities in the, in the UK. And I said, look, I'll register the company. I want a 10% cut of everything that you're doing. Uh, and I don't want to do anything. Right. So we started, we started this, uh, and I think it was about a month, a month and a half in, I set up the bank accounts, registered the company, all this, but still didn't want, you know, anything to do with it. Um, and then I just checked the bank account at some, at some point, and it was like over 20 K in there. And then I went to this guy and I, and I said, uh, dude, do we, do we just make some money? Uh, how, <laughs> you know, how did this happen? And it was like, oh, oh, this business, lots of money. And I was like, okay, 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 okay. this is, uh, this is interesting. Uh, so tell me more about it. Right. And then we actually got, got into it. And he said that, look, I, I, I could really use your help. Uh, his English wasn't very up to scratch, um, at the time. So I said, okay, fine. I'm going to talk to all these universities. I'm going to build some partnerships. We should, you know, maybe have uh, referral partners in China and so on. Anyway, long story short, uh, that. Um, kind of two years in that business became many different businesses. So we started with the consultancy, uh, and then we developed a range of services to respond to the need, uh, of the Chinese students that were relocating to the UK. So we were renting apartments for them. We we're doing airport transfers. And, uh, I think in the, in kind of like the last phases, we even started selling, selling cars. Um, so that, uh, yeah, it built, it, bu- it built really nicely, it took us all around China, uh, and I. I really loved it, but I, I can't say that I did it for the love of education necessarily at the time. It was more, this is an amazing opportunity and it kind of just, just, just picked up. Um, yeah. So, so after that, I, uh, I ended up actually moving to China, um, to pursue another business, uh, that did not work. And after China, uh, I spent about a year down in, um, in, in Xiamen, uh, Fujian province. Then I went to Romania with a cosmetics business, uh, that didn't go very well. And then I ended up in Dubai, um, with yet another, another venture, okay. uh, which also did not go very well. Uh, and then eventually I, and I ended up working for, a for an education company because I kind of went back to basics and I said, okay, what do I really know? Um, you know, so I said, okay, you know, I've done education. I had a moderately successful business in the, in the space. Uh, so I'm going to do this again. Um, and then I started, I started getting more, more interested in it. Um, and it also got me thinking about my own education and kind of where the, where the gaps were. You look like you're going to ask me something. I was going to ask you something, right. I was going to let you flow instead. Yeah, go on. Um, that's when you met me, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're allowed to eat again. Uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, if you remember, <laughs> I thought you were a great pain. Uh, yeah, like, I wasn't the easiest. So I was, the, I was your boss at the time, and yeah, you were you were one of the difficult uh, cases. Unionizing, I, unionizing. That's what I was saying. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, as you know, they used to be illegal. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, well, how did how did we how did we get here? So, so, so essentially, uh, well, 
you're going to help me conceptualize this, this idea probably as much as I, as I helped you. But uh, if, if, if I really think about how we started, it's going to, I jumped on your bandwagon, uh, which you saying that, um, you know, education has, has to be different. And that's actually what got me thinking about my own education. And I was thinking, my God, I wasted so many years of my life and by the end of it, I never really identified what I really want to do with my, with my life. Right. So I kind of just knew that I want to go into business and make lots and lots of money, but, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's, uh, is not, is not enough. Um, and I think, I, I think I would have benefited more from having identified what I really like and what I'm really good at, uh, at a much younger age. Yeah. I think that that comes to one of the core problems I think that we'll end up discussing about education, but just to give you an idea about, you know, what you know, obviously know the story well about what, how I got into education. I had exactly the same thing that you did. You said, uh, I didn't think education was ever going to be a career that I went into. And despite, you know, going through the educational system and having it be a really big part of my life, um, where I sort of end up going to Oxford and education, it's all that everyone, everyone talks about. I still didn't think at the end of that journey that I'd end up, I'd end up getting involved in education as, as a sector. And I think that especially kind of school edge education, I, I didn't really see the value in it. Uh, we've talked about this before that when I was doing things like selecting GCSEs, I selected things that I thought would be fun. So like music and drama, um, but I always knew I was kind of good at science and maths. Oh, that's a good way of doing it. Yeah. It? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, uh. I get when I look back at it, it was a great decision, right? Because drama is a lot of what gave me my confidence. I've always loved music. Um, so perhaps I thought these were going to be softer subjects and I'd have an easier time, but also they were things I genuinely enjoyed. Like I was always in the school play already. So like doing drama felt like a sensible choice to me. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I pick my A-levels and I go, well, I'm, I'm good at science and maths, so I may as well just do science and maths. Uh, and I'm not selecting it for anything massively aspirational. I'm just kind of thinking I'm good at this and I'll just do what I'm good at. And it's only when I meet a teacher that kind of believes in me that says, maybe you should try something like Oxford and Cambridge. And then I go and have this amazing experience at Oxford. And, and, and I think for the first time I start to realize what I think is a good educational system. I start to look at it and go, Okay, these people are trying to teach me how to teach myself. They're trying to help me learn how I learn. And I get to the end of that though, and I, I still am convinced that is not what high school or, or school age sort of education is about. And my friends are telling me you should become a teacher. You'll love it. You've been tutoring all this time and I'm absolutely not. So, uh, it's, it's boring. It's a dinosaur. It's a career that I don't want to be involved in. And then I decide to become an auditor. That's uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It actually went up the ladder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, that, uh, that's actually how how I was thinking about education as well. Like, why would I go into education? Everyone yeah. is 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 broke, right? And I want to make <laughs> money. So this is clearly not a fit for me. Uh, and also, you know, I took issue with my with my own education. Um, kind of, although I, I I always did well in school, right? So I I kind of finished high school with with top grades in in Romania, uh, but for some reason I just hated education. I, I just, uh, had such a high resistance to, you know, being taught stuff. And I always thought like, this is useless. It's not, yeah. not going to help me in life. Right. Uh, even though we were spending, you know, six to seven hours in, 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 in school every day, uh, which I thought it was insane. I still think it's insane. And yeah, I mean, well, we've seen it in what we do that, that it perhaps doesn't have to be quite that long and you lose, you lose the sort of engagement factor. But what actually ultimately got me into education was one, realizing that auditing was uh, a worse job <laughs> or more boring than, uh, than I'd actually anticipated. And, and two, a bit of a fluke of, of coming out here to Dubai, uh, Anna, my now wife, she, uh, moved out here. Yeah. And I thought, okay, I'll, 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 I'll do something that I know how to do. I knew there was tuition companies out here. I came in and, and I did it. And that's obviously where I, where I met you and caused you a lot of trouble. And, uh, oh, you still do. <laughs> um, and so then, then I, then I think, is this for me? I'm thinking probably a year, maybe two years. And I get asked to homeschool. It was probably you that actually, actually asked me and said, uh, right, we've got this student. 
homeschool them. And I think, oh, wow, that's quite an open-ended ask. And I, but I get really stuck in. I, it's really interesting being able to just sort of map this project out in such a big way. And I remember the the parent that we had, she wanted an incredibly detailed scheme of work. And we, we spent hours and hours building this. And it was so interesting. And then when I moved up to, to management, uh, thanks to you, I, um, that was the big thing that I kept thinking about, like homeschooling is interesting, but it's quite a varied output when we're using kind of tutors who are, who are kind of new. And so we did all these partnerships. We tried working with other online schools and it just never quite, um, it never quite worked. Uh, and then we thought then that was really my first thought of, should we just be the ones doing this? And I think that's probably where we started to have conversations then. And then when you said, oh, I think we can fund this, then I thought, oh, wow, that was not... I have no idea how <laughs> how I was going to do it. Uh, oh, you pulled it up. But, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, well, you were, you were one of my first investors, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 you remember, I convinced you to invest my well, the first in the first MDP. And then I convinced you, you know, you, you remember how you were at that, uh, at the time. Uh, so I said, look, I can get more people behind this if I, yeah. if I, if I managed to, to get you involved, uh, just a quick point on, on, on management. Uh, I was just thinking, why, why did I decide to essentially promote you at the time? And you were such an absolute pain to deal with because you were very opinionated and you had, you know, you know, you had your own ideas about how how things are done still am uh yes uh, yeah, which is uh yeah it's a it's a very good thing but, but it's actually my solution at the time was well we can't get rid of him because he's a he's a brilliant tutor uh so how do we deal with this problem and well give the guy a promotion he's clearly clever uh and by having to manage people himself he will understand what i'm talking about right and yeah. you'll see the wider issues. Uh, yeah, I, I think that is genuinely far. I think you rem remember in those early days when we were talking about it, I did have this realization and this, and this point that's probably where we got closer was when I started to see your side of it a little bit more and I started going, yep. okay. But then I think it was us working together that actually ended up resolving some of those problems. Oh, um, absolutely. So I think was, yeah, it was, I mean, a great partnership that's gone on to, to, to be even more than that now. Um, but one of the things we both keep saying is we didn't want to be in education. We didn't think it was the career that we want to be in. Um, and I want to, I want to kind of address that a little bit and have a think about what, what do you think the problems are with education? I always think about Ken Robinson, uh, talking about learning and education being two different things. And you were saying how you just seem to despise this education system despite actually being quite quite good at it and achieving well and you always seem to me to be quite a curious person and you you're very interested in things um what, what do you think of that what, what are the problems with education well yeah, i think i think the problems are are many and 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 my view only could be quite quite controversial because essentially you know if it was up to me you just tear tear the whole system down and 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 this is because when i Think and when I look at um, um, you know successful people around me, a lot of them actually dropped out of education, mm -hmm. uh, and they kind of you know found their their calling on their on their own. They learn how to code, they learn, learn how to um, I don't know, just 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 be entrepreneurs uh, essentially, mm -hmm. and they carve their own their own piece of the pie, and they did it all on their own. So the so then I'm you know I'm wondering. Um, how did education help them, right? And if you talk to a lot of these people, and 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 you know, you have we have uh, yeah. some of, some of our advisors that are helping us build this project. Um, you know, they've achieved um, this is, this is an immense success in their in their fields, reached I think one and a half, two billion people, right, with their with their products, right? Yeah, yeah. And they are not, but they're not a product of their, of their education, right? And, uh, and then when you think of, of, of education, I think it is this incredibly important stepping stone in one's life. So, you know, you have, um, your family when you're, when you're very young and the way you're, you're brought up and the values that are instilled in you. And then the next really big part of your life, uh, is your education, uh, and, and somehow, you know, you don't, uh, you don't hear a lot of success stories that that came from having an amazing education 
um, I don't know, well, I think, I think there are a lot of people that kind of managed to get a stable life as a result of having been through the education system, but, uh, I don't, I don't see a lot of inspirational, mm. super excited people that, that, that attribute their, um, success to, to, to the education system. So then, uh, so then my, my question is, is, is why are we not making this huge part of, um, you know, of, of, of children's life more, more exciting? Yeah, well, I think, you, I mean, you see this when you look at yeah. like e- Elon Musk or uh, Zuckerberg and you see a lot of these people dropping out of big, ed- they, they make it, they achieve these amazing things, they end up in Stanford or Harvard, but actually when they start creating something and building something, they divert and they divert their attention on it. And I think, I read this really interesting report actually the other day, uh, I think it was in TechCrunch UK and it was saying that... Um, People are modeling right now what AI will do and how that is, which jobs it's more likely to take away. And mm. ev- everyone's thinking, oh, it's the number crunchers, it's the it's the kind of the, 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 the entry-level jobs. And actually, most people are saying it's middle management that's going to drop down. And at the minute, what I think, and I think this is kind of what you're saying, that aspirationally, education is basically getting you towards middle management. Like it wants you to get uh, get on the ladder then get safe and be kind of happy in your job, but it's not making a ton of CEOs. Yeah. So, well, I remember when I was in, in, in education, well, when I was in school, I was always thinking, you know what, I'm going to have my own business because my, my parents had a business at the, at a time and that kind of inspired me. And I saw that they were living better than, um, you know, most of my, well, I was living better than most of my peers because of what my parents were doing. So I said, you know, I want to drop like, you know, that guy's uh, mom or dad. Um, I want to be like mm. like my parents. Well, they actually eventually ended up uh, just at a at a crucial um, um, time in my in my development, uh, messing up really really badly with the okay. with the business. So you know, I, I was growing up with this, the dreams of of you know getting a car when I was eighteen and and, and all this stuff, and then those dreams were crushed. And, and it was very, very hard to adjust to that. But even that in itself was a lesson in business. Yeah. It, you know, it's not, um, it's not only the upside that you see, right? You, you go through ups and downs. But anyway, I was thinking about, I will have my own business. I'll be an entrepreneur and that will give me the success that I want. And then when I went to university, I said, oh, well, in Romania, we just want to wing it, right? Yeah. So maybe I'm thinking about this wrong. And I have to get a job, so I started business management marketing, and I was looking at marketing jobs at the at the time, and 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 thinking, okay, I'm just gonna get into a career, I'm gonna climb the ladder, and eventually I'm gonna become some, I don't know, marketing director, something, something, mm-hmm. in some in some kind of way. But I couldn't really think further than that. And every time I was talking about it, like I just was not was not excited by by it. And then I look back. The people who kind of took that trajectory and they may be very happy in what in what they're doing and you know have their their lives and stuff but not so much more than that um and, but and i think it's that ambition that's well it's that ambition that drives you right it's that ambition and, that, and that just bringing it back to this idea of um you know what's wrong with the education system that it it seems to me that that it, it kind of gets that kind of beats that out of children a little bit because we start to tell people there's a right and a wrong and I think when you are aspiring to put people sort of on the job ladder there are kind of right and wrong ways of doing things and you you know you've got to go into a corporate uh, scenario and you've got to kind of do it this way and this is the way they do it and actually that was my big problem when I became an auditor was that that I kept coming up with ideas and being like can we do this can we do that can we do this mm-hmm. and they were like absolutely not we've always done it this way and we you know who are you just coming in in the first year and, and, and trying to change it But I I think it's that kind of creativity that we're losing a little bit in schools. And you you see it with kids, like kids will have a shot at anything. And and, and I love working with the younger kids and you see they'll ask crazy questions. They're not afraid to pull you when they think something's wrong. They're not afraid to question these sorts of things. Older kids, once you get close to A-level, it's it's a lot more like them asking you, you how do I do this? How How do I get through this exam paper? Rather than them being like, you know, what, what are people thinking about this thing? Is this actually true? And I think when I went to university, that was my first experience of sort of realizing even chemistry is not that black and white. Um, 
Mm. And we, we did this thing remember when we were doing the branding early on. Um, we were working with a branding agency. We were trying to figure out our logo. Mm. And uh, we were going through this big branding exercise and we were trying to figure out, all, we were learning all this stuff about identities and, and what the visions were and mission statements and all this kind of stuff. We did that exercise with all the, the car yeah, brands. Right. And uh, and they came out, and then when they when they came with a pitch, they came out and did this. They showed us that when you googled "why is school so," the top things that c- come up are like boring, depressing, long. Uh, yeah, that's I, actually it's actually not beach tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It's such a it's such a good point. <laughs> but um, but yeah, and I think the thing we were most amazed by was that wasn't a piece of marketing. We went away. And Googled it, and it, it really is what people are asking about education. So I think it comes back to this like learning versus education type thing. How do we make the system, which I think is what Ken Robinson refers to education. Education is the the system of learning, and learning is the process of acquiring knowledge. Everyone loves to acquire new knowledge. Like the most watched things on social media is our educational videos, not your traditional educational videos, but things that where you learn something. Yeah. Um, but not everyone likes the system by which we we learn. Um, and I think that's what we're kind of trying to change here. So Well, you see the success that we've we've had on 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 social media and the engagement levels that we that we got by producing this sort of this sort of content. Yeah, absolutely. Sparking curiosity. And and that's it, right? It, what we've always talked about from the start is is intellectual curiosity. And I, I, this is probably a good point to ask. Um, this, I mean, we all have kind of inspiration, and we all have role models that we that we aspire to be. And and I've mentioned Ken Robinson. And I I love uh, all of Ken Robinson's work, and uh, think it has framed a lot of what we're doing. But for me, like I find people really inspirational who are just curious. So I like so people like Louis Theroux frames how I question kids. Mm. Uh, his notorious silence. So he will just he just will leave an awkward silence. He's happy to do it. And if I'm letting a student explain something to me and they've only half explained it, I'm I'm just happy to to wait. And you see, then they'll try. They'll try harder. They'll so so he's informed me a lot. People who are really great at communicating complex ideas, like like Brian Cox. We talked about this before, not succession, Brian Cox, but uh, Professor Brian Cox. And um, disappointed. <laughs> Although he is an inspiration, but for different reasons. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, would, uh, I would do an impression, you know, you know, you know, I'd like to do this, but uh, yeah, maybe not Brian Cox, but Logan yeah. Roy, right? Uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, and then, you know, I love this guy, uh, Chris, Chris Donnelly, who he, he sort of critiques every all of these big influencers telling you how your day should be and how you should be as an entrepreneur and how you should be as a yeah. child and you know as well as i do yeah, yeah get up at nine and five hours doing all these things don't get in the nine they're <laughs> five you get up five in the morning oh, I, meditate you hit the gym right after i'm at nine the previous evening oh uh, yeah <laughs> yeah because sleep is already yeah 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 more yeah. successful people don't sleep <laughs> um but who do you who do you find inspirational <laughs> while you're while uh, well that's uh that's that's actually a tricky one because uh, I well I follow a lot of influential people but uh, I'm uh, I'm not I'm not necessarily listening to a lot of of what of what they have to say I kind of see bites of what um, you know that kind of catch catch my attention and I I kind of I like to look at success stories right because it kind of validates the journey that we're going through and, you know, looking at how Amazon started or, you know, any of the other, uh, well, a lot of the other big companies, they all went through these ups and downs periods, you know, and then every time I look at something like that, uh, I remind myself that, yeah, this is this is fine, it's painful, but it's definitely part of the journey and it'll make for a heck of a good story, right? Uh, but I, actually, a lot of the people that inspire me personally are... Mm-hmm these people that I mentioned earlier that kind of without, you know, a lot of help, uh, without necessarily a wealthy family, without, um, you know, a very strong education because a lot of my friends actually dropped out, um, they they managed to become successful and they, they, they found what they, what they enjoy doing and what they were good at and they managed to, you know, to turn that into, into 
you know, big business or big businesses. Mm. Uh, and then as a result, it made them, I don't know, fulfilled, happy people, right? Which which is kind of the the point, right? Uh, I think I, I talk quite a bit about about money. It's not, uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not just about that. I think it's about time and being able to live your life without a lot of the stresses that you get from from a job. Okay, you get a lot of stress from, from, from business, but if it's something that you actually enjoy doing, you enjoy problem solving, and you love what your business is doing, then you're more likely to actually, uh, you know, rush out of bed in the morning, being excited and going like, I'm going to solve this problem, and then it's going to be fine, and then I'm going to do this, that, and that. Right. Well, you're the you're the money man, so I'd expect you to talk a lot about money. You have to; it's part of your job. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, and good thing I enjoy. <laughs> I enjoy I enjoy talking about it, and 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 uh, because it's uh, you know a lot of times it's an awkward topic to bring up, right? Like yeah, how 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 do you pitch to to someone, and and especially that a lot of our investors are kind of not non traditional, right? We have yeah. um, we have a few angel investors that kind of believed in us but a lot of these people are are friends as well um and and well some are some 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 well a lot of them actually became friends as, a, as a, you know uh, throughout throughout the journey but how do you open that that conversation and how do you not shy away from from saying you know here's this amazing idea and i think you'll be good for 50 for 100k and you know you have you know believe in us uh, yeah. and uh, and in what we're doing um, well, especially when it was just an idea. Now we have something to show. Yeah, easier. But but back then, that was that was a real challenge. I spe- and, and especially since the idea has gone through so many evolutions. Yeah. So I think in a way that was even easier. You remember at the at the beginning when we first started raising money, I think we set a target and we kind of hit it by week two. Uh, yeah, we got and people the- excited pretty, pretty. Well, you could say when they lot is good. good. <laughs> I guess you could say whatever. Whatever the uh, whatever we wanted, yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah. Uh, and it and it worked. And I, I'm 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 even thinking at the moment that sometimes I get to well, well we've seen so much during this yeah. time, right? Although I think we've we've achieved so much and we've uh, validated the idea, right? Launching in in September, getting yeah. strong sales traction. Um, but I I. I think that I have a lot of the issues in the in the back of my mind, and I have to remind myself to not get stuck on those on those things that maybe didn't work, right? Yeah, uh, because then you have. I, I mean, you know, a, a well-versed business person understands that during the course of a business, you will have about a million ideas, and you will twitch them, and you will you will try some, you will discard some, and then eventually you find something that works, and you and you build it for further, right? But then yeah. if you go to an investor and you say. Well, you know, we tried doing this and it didn't it didn't quite work. The investment yeah. was like, oh, oh, it didn't it didn't quite work. How much money did you spend on that? How about <laughs> Well that's yeah. a real big challenge, isn't it? And you know, mm-hmm. me and you have debated this endlessly. Uh how do we remain honest when we're talking to investors, but also um get the investment? You know, that's 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 the real trick. We don't wanna we don't yeah. wanna sell anyone on a on on something that we're not doing and go around the, uh, the big tangent. Um, or go go off on a tangent of something that isn't quite what we're doing. And I know we've mm. been pressured into making educational games, we've been pressured, and we've always managed to, managed to hold strong on the vision. But it's tempting, right? When uh, when someone's yeah, saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. going, I'll give you the money if you do the educational game, you know? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, and you, well, you you see that this, this would sell well, right? Because you can pre- present something that's incredibly exciting. Uh, and, and, I have to say, I get excited by by these things because you remember I bring them to you and I go like, Carl, I spoke to this person and they think we should do this, and they they are very likely to fund this. So you know, we should we should yeah yeah. They have to pass my we should probably of questions probably feel that yeah. <laughs> but, but then you you always bring you know the big vision into 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 play. We need to make and you know a product that actually. Helps children, right? Not yeah, children. Uh, will have have a, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I go like yes, yes, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, it just this this actually got me thinking about uh, how we actually got our first our first VC, right? Because the um, the vision is so well. Uh, I think I think it's so big because we we essentially want to build a complete schooling experience um, on the on the web, um, and you know we we 
found a way to keep kids engaged after many studies and research and testing and 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 and, and so on. Um, but it really takes someone with a slightly different vision to actually see what we're what we're building here, right? Yeah. Um, and that's why you know the first um, the, the lead investor uh, still still is today from um, um, uh, from the web free space. Yeah, um, I think. I think that's I think that's interesting because we um, kind of struggled convincing uh, more traditional investors to to really get behind this at such an early stage, and it took someone who's kind of more adventurous um, and you know willing willing to try things to say like, yep, I think there is an issue which is with 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 education. There is, I I take issue with my own education. And I want to see something different and what you guys pitched is is great. So you know. But then that came with its own challenges, right? Because when we moved into the, the Web3 space, which which I think was, I mean, that came from you. It was, it was a genius move to get, get funding so early on. Um, was, but, but then when we went into that space, that was where we got this pressure to kind of do something different because we kept getting told education's just not cool. It's not, mm-hmm. and, and, and for me, I mean, it, 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 well, I'm sure it resonates with both of us quite well because, well, that's what we both thought when we got into education. It's kind of the reason we're trying to change it. But well, we're trying to make it cool, right? We're trying to make uh, it, yeah. I mean, the the content that we're making, the style of everything that we do is is quite, well, is it, not quite. It's very different, right? From yeah. from from anything that's out there, and that's uh, but that's that that's why is. It's hard. It's hard to get people, especially from the traditional space, to see it because it is so different. And 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 a lot of a lot of people say, "Well, what's wrong with education?" Um, or even if they agree, there's something wrong with it. They think like, "Well, it's 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 just the way it is, right? Mm. You won't change. You won't change it overnight. You won't change it in two, three, four, five years. This will take a long time. So, you know, and uh, and investors want returns, right? So they want something something quick." Okay, so we found out that uh, education wasn't cool. Neither of us thought it before we started it out. Getting investment was really difficult because people didn't see it. Why? Why did we start it? Why? Why would you say you started it, the online school? Uh, well, to be completely honest, I just saw massive opportunity. Right. <laughs> so uh, obviously, we're both in the education space. I saw what parents were saying. I I saw how we were working with with kids on these very personalized programs, and then I did a bit of research on the on the space and found companies that uh, are doing this successfully uh, in 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 other parts of the world. Not not so many of them in 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 Europe and on the British curriculum, right? So then yeah. I you know I just thought this this is going to be big. Uh, and then the more I thought about it, and uh, the more we got down <laughs> down to it, I realized that yes, this is this is potentially, you know, huge, right? Um, so there was that, and then also the fact that I really do take issue with the <clears throat> with the education system, and I I think that we have too many uh, young people that finish school, go into university, they do a degree that they have little to no interest in is just what they, what what their parents told them what I don't know society told them mm-hmm. what they kind of think that they want to do but they're not really passionate about it and then you've wasted a bunch of years in school then you go and waste another three to four years in 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 university because you just don't know what you're going to do um and so so basically I want to fix that I want I want to to build this and I want I want kids that that go to the online school uh, by the time they're 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 true to hi- to have identified, uh, you know, their their at least their core strengths, right, and 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 also their their passions, right. Yeah. Uh, and that's why, right, we're we're aiming to give them such a wide range of 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 sub um, of um, things to choose from, so so that they can find that that passion, right. Yeah. Well, I think I th- well, it would be it would be unfair to say that uh, that that. That either of us started it without thinking this was a big opportunity. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of work. It's very, very hard to build a startup. And I think we both thought that it was an opportunity there. But thinking yeah. back, well, uh, a lot, a lot harder than we than we originally thought, right? Uh, yeah. And that, 
but uh, it was an entrepreneur that that said that if if I knew how how hard this this would be, I would never have have started this. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I can't do remember that. Uh, but then, and 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 maybe with with all these times, right? Yeah. Uh, but then you're kind of too far in, and you you know you realize that you had you know a thousand problems, but you've kind of fixed you know 759 of them so you go like well it's hard but we got this far and you know so we need to see it through right yeah uh, but yeah much harder than than but i think i think for me like i i got into it because i saw the power of of what we were doing and ha- having been a teacher in the classroom and being able to engage students in what are often traditionally boring subjects yeah. um I studied chemistry. I'm, I'm super passionate about chemistry and science and maths. And often I would get kids from a tuition point of view who hated chemistry. Their parents were like, my son needs to do better in chemistry. I want to send them to a chemistry teacher. And they weren't happy about coming to see me. You know, they're wasting an hour of their evening. And then for them to walk away feeling engaged and happy or inspired and be able to change people's perception of this. I thought was really powerful, but the way the sector is set up at the minute is it is actually quite hard for a lot of people to access. And if you really trace my journey back, where did I start tutoring? Well, I I started tutoring for charities. Um, And I think with what we're building, we have this amazing opportunity to bring high quality education to all students in the world, keep them engaged, keep them excited about what they're learning about. And, And sort of going back to what you said earlier about um, you know, we're not really training people to be, let's say, CEOs or business owners. We're sort of training them to be this kind of middle management. We we have some big problems that uh, the world is going to face over, well, forever. So we've got the, the mm-hmm. pandemic, which just hit. We've got climate change. You know, we've got big problems that need to be solved. And I think the only way we will get any solution to those problems is by inspiring young people to actually take them on. Um and I think with the sort of thing that we're doing, that's kind of our goal is, to, is to, to help people find their element, think, okay, this is this is a challenge I want to take on and I'm capable of taking on this challenge. Mm. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a very noble way of, 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 of looking at it. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I 100% get behind the idea that Education has to, has to be accessible, right? Because you mentioned that you started teaching for for charities, right? Um, and that with what we've developed, we can actually achieve this at uh, at scale. And you remember it was it was one of my things from the from the beginning as well. I think I think education should should not be a a privilege, um, and that you you should be able to to access this no no matter who you are who you are no matter where you are no matter what your what your background is now obviously there are various logistical challenges behind behind that because it's still dependent on uh, hardware and and internet um our solution uh, but i i'm sure we will find ways to solve it we'll find we'll find pi- partners but my my you know dream is that um, we can bring this in front of uh, you know hundreds of millions of, of 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 kids eventually but to achieve that we really need to keep keep developing and to keep dropping the price yeah um uh, more and more uh, just think about that as well how so what do you think have been our kind of biggest challenges in building this because you're talking about this we have to keep developing we have to keep dropping the price we have to keep finding new ways to reinvent ourselves to make sure that this this works and we achieve our vision of reaching hundreds of millions of kids. Mm. What do you think have been the challenges that we've had so far and that we've managed to solve? Uh, well, I, I think I think there were many. Uh, some maybe we'll address in a in a later pod, uh, podcast. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> After, um, but yeah, I, I think I think we've had we've had personal challenges right yeah. along along the way of just adjusting to essentially really jumping full in into into startup uh, i was mentioning investment and investors earlier and saying that a lot of the people that actually believed in this early on were my were my friends and and mm-hmm. and, and my family 
and I feel a great responsibility towards towards them. So this this kind of weight heavy on my shoulders. So every time we kind of you know hit the roadblock, I I would think, oh my god, what are we gonna do? You know, I don't care about the money that that I'm potentially going to lose, but uh, I I really worry yeah. you know about their about their money. Um, but I think I think it's a healthy approach. I don't think you can you can you know to just realize that you have a duty to your to your investors and shareholders. Uh, but you also can't let it weigh you down, right? So, yeah. but I, it was well my my personal challenge um, essentially. Uh, and then I think, um, yeah, uh, I think I think it was a lot, um, you know, in in how we started the platform and how we played with the different models, and, and kind of how how we want to display things. Um, kind of seems like. Um, yeah, I think that the UI UX was a big challenge, and I think we built that first MVP. And we were super unhappy with it. And every time we looked at it, we couldn't figure out why. And I think... Well, every time I, uh, I looked at it, I I was just thinking, why are we just building... Why are we trying to build uh, Coursera? Yeah, the same and, thing everyone else has done. Yes. But, but, you know, okay, we're building a Coursera interface, but we're doing traditional schooling and, and onto it. But then every other player that's trying to get into this market is using an off-the-shelf solution that kind of just looks the same, right? So. Yeah, and I think we had, I think when we started to own our approach a little bit on what we wanted to do, we started to realize that if we used an after that shelf solution, we'd, we'd always be limited. Uh, and it's actually one of the factors now when we talk to people and we talk to potential partners that they're quite impressed by that we built this from, from the ground up. But it wasn't easy getting there, I think, realizing. No, it wasn't. Also, actually, without the tech background, right? Yeah. It is something I really struggle with because, and, and, and this is where it was hard to keep kind of the budgets under control. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I just think that tech is like magic, right? So <laughs> if I tell the devs that I want a button here and I want to drag and drop this yeah. thing and I want this to spin and do whatever, I expect them to be able to do it in a res- reasonable budget because it's all a few lines of code and a bit of design, right? So yeah. that's, that, that's one of the struggles to, to, to realize that, okay, we don't have an unlimited budget to build this. Yeah. So what are the things that we, that we need just for the well that was the, that was one of our big problems wasn't it that uh that we worked with a set of developers with no designer and we kind of thought naively that if we kept asking for things and we wanted to do this and we wanted to do that that they would keep this budget under control but they were just like yeah we can build that and then they built it their business <laughs> but also at the same time they built it and it didn't quite work the way we envisaged it because they're not the designers and i think actually when we when we started working with the vc and they gave us a designer. So you're going about this the wrong around. That was a big learning experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sort of no, working that was, with that design. That was amazing. And I, I remember really enjoying those initial workshops. Right, just just understanding that there is there is a process to this, and you have to follow it. You have to find your user journey, your personas, etc. You have to do studies. You have to get uh, a prototype in front of kids. Um, yeah. that, that reassured me that. Okay, we're not just gonna kind of come up with something. We think it's gonna work. We're gonna ask a bunch of our friends, a couple of kids, and then we're gonna build it, right? No, we're gonna think about this really systematically. So yeah, I think our yeah yeah our I designer has been a the designers right? <laughs> yeah a, a really key part of like getting the vision out of our heads. And I think it was amazing that she managed to understand it so quickly and and kind of get what we we're doing, especially since it hadn't really been done before. It hadn't really been done in education. So when we're, when we're building the online schools, we've, we've had these problems. We're thinking about UI, UX design. We're sort of learning this tech journey. Um, when we're developing the solution, what do you think you're thinking about? Cause we do this together, right? So we, we speak to the developers together and we try to analyze, uh, you know, what features are, are going to be, when, where are they going on the roadmap? What do you think your kind of guiding light is when you're deciding where things go? Well, uh, I think we're building this with with the kids in mind, right? Yeah. Uh, they're going to be using it. Uh, and mm. you remember, this is where I kind of get the crazy uh, ideas, right? Let, yeah. Let's have avatars. Let's let them customize it. Let's do X, Y, Z. And then I kind of need to be toned down. But essentially, my guiding light is it has to be engaging. Yeah. Um, and, well, I always complain about the fact that it's not light lightning fast just yet, right? <laughs> with a staging environment. 
Yeah. But yeah, uh, it needs to be super fast. It needs to be intuitive. It needs to be super engaging. Well, I, I think that's what we did when we started building content, right? We said um, the social media strategy, for example, we said, let's test the content that we are going to ultimately end up putting on a platform. If we want this flipped classroom solution, if we want this independent learning, we have to keep students incredibly engaged. And I think we both kind of had a look at what was out there at the minute and we just couldn't gel with it. Uh, and even as adults, we were thinking that this, this would be hard to watch. And well, I think that's what we both actually downloaded TikTok for the first time. So we had to look at content that they are watching independently and choosing to watch. And I think to our surprise, we found, you know, like edu talkers had billions of views and learn on yeah. TikTok had billions of views. And then when we actually started watching this, we realized there's a lot of learning content like that. And I'm not like learning content, like Mythbusters, which is, which is always fun. There is a lot of like maths learning content. Like this guy, I always send you that uh, ends every maths video with how exciting. Uh, is is brilliant and I watch yeah. it all the time and he's got so many followers and so you see this kind of school level education content it's all there and I think we said all right let's try our hand at it yeah and I don't think we quite expected to get the reaction that we did and to get so many views so quickly mm. um and I well we're, we're definitely hoping for it but yeah, no, yeah, I, I, yeah. but in the back of my mind I kind of I kind of knew just thinking of about the um uh, younger me yeah um and that's that's where you know i wanted to do this thing with two g wagons yeah yeah uh, pulling each other and and and, and demonstrates uh, demonstrating the friction friction and, yeah yeah um i think we didn't quite believe that was going to work when we did it as well no uh no we did. it was a bit of a test for ourselves yeah yeah exactly <laughs> exactly but, uh, but what's interesting is that you can find these hooks right because uh basically you, you can you can apply education to everything, right? Yeah. You can do it on cars, right? And that's why I insisted that we we did the, the cars videos that we yeah. uh that we did. And they and and they worked, right? Yeah. And there are probably a bunch of kids that really like cars that maybe came there for the G Wagons uh or sure. whatnot and the sounds and the tour and that. Uh but actually they ended up learning a formula at the end, right? And yeah. and, and that's something that you're able to visualize when you need it and you go like how, how does this, this actually actually work right yeah. so all of a sudden friction is not uh that boring anymore yeah yeah or you know understanding g-force right when we yeah. put james in a race car and then and, and he was thrown around the track terrified that, james in a race car yeah yeah terrified me. <laughs> i was i was very envious that i wish i was in his in his uh, what's the bit as good if you were enjoying it that was uh, the the key the yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> experience <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but i think i mean that was basically a big test of what we were doing right so we said this is actually a really important part of what we're building but also um this can lead into longer form content which we were thinking more I guess kind of like this, like podcast style or uh, YouTuber style, um, so that kids could get hooked and then actually learn about the thing they wanted to mm. to learn about. Um, so yeah, engaging is just a big part of what we're doing, I think. Uh, but I think the other thing that, that particularly you talk about that we talk about quite a lot is uh, is relevance. So sort of how relevant some of this content actually is, and you know getting kids to actually engage with people who are doing some of these things that we want them to do this innovative um career so I, I, how do you think we're addressing relevance let's say yes well well i think it's actually we we want kids that go that go through our school um to identify what they what they want to do right uh, and and in order to do that i think you know, we need we need to inspire them, right? Uh, and we need to be able to help them make this connection between their education and something in the in the real world, right? But it's not it's not as easy as just uh, you know, here's five options. Yeah, you can be an astronaut, you can be a lawyer, you can be blah, blah, and that's this is what you need to study in order to to get there, right? So I think I think it's a it's a it's a process, and 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 the um, you know the way we're addressing it is we are bringing influential people um um into into the school to actually talk to the kids right mm -hmm. so you know we're doing this this um 
this course that's uh, that was quite a challenge and I'm sure it's going to continue being quite a challenge and a lot of fun with Akhmed Hafar, oh, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. The, the famous voice of Dubai, right? Voice of Dubai. <laughs> uh, <no>. <laughs> okay, <laughs> impressions later. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, sorry, Ahmed. <laughs> um, yes, but, but, but even, you know, bringing him on, right? Uh, you may find that some kids actually want to be, I don't know, a voiceover actor yeah. or, or, you know, aspire to do... Or, or, or maybe they never thought that being a voiceover actor can actually lead to you being very successful, right? Yeah. How far is you know under thirty? He was he was actually in Forbes thirty under thirty this this yeah yeah this year, and you know okay, his passion is cars. He's got two Ferraris and 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 and, and stuff. But, but he made a really comfortable life for himself by doing what he really enjoys doing. Yeah. And guess what? He dropped out of school, right? Yeah. Um, so, so you know, we want kids to not drop out of school because education is super valuable, su- super interesting, but we want them to see that, that, that uh, you know, this is actually relevant. You have to get through this and we're helping you find what you're really good at. So I was saying we're bringing Hafar on, but um, we've got plans to bring all these other people. So all these entrepreneurs from various industries where, you know, kids will be able to link what they're studying to... Well, okay, this person is in I don't know real estate development, or yeah. or, or um, he's building apps, or he's building sites, or he has a consulting business. Uh, so we want kids to see these people. Oh, he's an influencer, right? Because yeah, the, there's an interesting um, you know way of, of, of how how do you get so popular? How do you find what's relevant, right? And if you see some of these people, that kind of the iterations of kind of personas that they go that they go through is quite is quite Fascinating, right? So yeah. you actually want to have a wide range of everything that happens in the real world that could be potential careers, businesses, uh, et cetera, ways of essentially making a life uh, that would, you know, appeal to... Yeah, well, I think that um, that these sort of partnerships have been a really important part of our of our journey and helping students to understand better what's actually out there because i think even go back to our big problem right probably one of our big turning points was the ui ux thing that we talked about um i had no idea what ui ux designer was i didn't even know that was a job you know <laughs> and i think i googled it I found that. <laughs> it's so we 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 learned this we've discovered it uh but presenting this to, to to students is is really interesting i think there was actually a guardian article that came out not long after after we started working with the ui ux designer that said 75% of, of, of teachers in the UK don't know what a UI UX designer is, but it's one of the most popular careers that kids want to go into. And I could safely say at that point, I was one of the 25% because we'd figured it out. But uh, but yeah, had I not had that experience, I would never know. And I think uh, that's what we're trying to do is, is present all these options, even things we don't know about now, and just kind of say, this is interesting. We need the students to know about this so that they can make informed decisions about their life. But partnerships for me was a was a big success, and working with people like Eight Billion Ideas, who I mm. I see as a really inspirational company, and, and doing something really amazing, and them building content for us was was really cool. And working with Pencil Spaces, this kind of Silicon Valley startup, then to build the virtual classroom inside our environment was a really big moment for us. What what do you think are the successes we've had? Yeah, so uh, I think. We talked about our our uh, TikTok, right? Yeah. So we actually never thought that we would get so many eyes on the on the channel, right? We've had nearly fifty million views. Nearly fifty million. And 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 this was this was just um, you know us trying content out, not trying really hard to make it popular, right? Uh, and uh, and also very you know simple kind of animated fun 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 content. So yes, I I put that down as a as a success. Um, and also the fact that um, you know we decided that we need to be revenue generating uh, well for a, for for various reasons, but uh, uh, the main one being uh, we really want proof concept, right? Yeah, we, we want to prove that this 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 way of educating works, right? So we opened well, we started trading actually in 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 September. We opened sales in August, um, and and we built revenue really really uh quickly right yeah so uh, you know we've we've had sales since uh going on uh, close to 300k um and 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 
that's a testament that you know people are asking for what for what we're doing and um, this is working right? yeah yeah uh, so the, so yeah i think i think that's a success the the fact that uh, actually leaders in the industry uh, started talking about um started talking to us and yeah. and and, uh, and kind of it called the eye of of of, of both uh, you know web free companies as well uh and uh and and traditional education education companies so i think i think that yeah that's really is really interesting and then, uh, and now i'm just super excited to to see it go live in yeah. january well slightly terrified but more than that excited because i just i just want to see people get onto it i want them yeah. to you know less you know break it whatever but i want i want feedback i want to see i think that it come to life that was a really big moment for us when traditional educators came in and said uh this is interesting and started sort of taking us seriously and talking yeah. to us seriously well uh, i think that's been happening for a while with you right because uh you're quite vocal on 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 linkedin which i yeah i, I didn't quite crack yet but uh you know people get behind the idea right but there's, there's always been this kind of like bated breath interest and then i think when we when we started going to events and actually showing people what we built that was a totally different reaction i felt so it, it felt like i could talk a big game at these at these events yeah. and people were slightly thinking but is anything going to come from this and then when we started showing people and that response was oh, what they're doing is actually good and i've seen it now that that was really exciting. So I think probably we should talk about we've we've gotten all the way this far and not actually talked that much about what the online school actually is and what it is that we're that we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, we talked a little bit about that first MVP and how we kind of based that around LMS systems, learning management systems like Coursera and things like that. And then I think for me it was the the real turning point was when we started to develop a system that we thought would actually engage students and so we thought would actually recreate a school like experience but not just by sort of copy pasting and putting it in a digital environment but by augmenting it with technology so just to kind of go through how we 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 thought about that we went a bit back to the drawing board and we started talking to it was an event i was speaking at and i was speaking to some architects and the architects um, I showed them our first version of the platform and I said, what, you know, we're having this problem. We're not happy with the way this, this works and the way this functions. What do you actually think about when you, when you build a school? And it was when they started separating it into these different learning experiences and saying, well, you need this. And I was talking about the campfire, the watering hole and the cave. Probably I could talk about that all day. So maybe for another podcast, but the idea was that these have these different learning experiences, uh, and that was the, became a really core premise of our platform, where we said, you know, instead of a school day being maths, then science, then English, it's going to be uh, acquisition of knowledge in the morning. It's going to be, uh, you know, consolidating that knowledge later on. It's going to be peer-to-peer -peer learning, and then it's going to be applying it in some way or another. So. If you were to try to describe what the online school actually is and what it does, what would you say? Well, I I'm going to use your your uh, wording here. You, you often say that it's 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 uh, different things to different people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because it's such a it's such a big project. Uh, but I I think essentially it's a um, it's an an all in schooling experience, right? That 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 you know uh, it's actually hooks you in based on your on your interests with short form content uh, and then recommends you longer form content and 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 helps you pick and choose your 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 subjects um and then kind of sees you through that through that journey but uh, the thing that i'm most excited about is that it is fully flexible right mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and that also is one of the first solutions out there for full full time schooling that you can actually access on a subscription uh, model, right? So I like this idea that you no longer have to register for your school uh, is 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 non-selective. Basically, you sign up with a subscription and you have this 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 um, you know vast database of 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 of, of content that you can, can you can consume at your at your own pace. So as a parent who wants to homeschool, you have everything you need 
uh, there. You have the tests, you have the videos, um, 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 and, and 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 the best thing about it is that um, you get access to to educators, right? So yeah. uh, our mentors, um, the full time team that's ready to jump into 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 a lesson whenever whenever there's there's a need for them. Um, so I think this 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 flexibility is really interesting, right? Because not all kids want to actually get up at seven in the morning, and there's nothing wrong with getting up slightly slightly later and with structuring your 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 learning a bit a bit differently. You know, there's nothing wrong with doing two hours in the morning and then going to play tennis or whatever you yeah. you you're interested, in, and 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 then just picking it up in the in the afternoon, right? Uh, so I think I think that's that's interesting, and and this also. Um, gets me thinking about about the bigger vision, right? Because our our full vision is to is is to be truly flexible, but also have have this uh, in person element, right? So having these education centers all over the world, right? Yeah. So then you know if you're a family that's based between uh, I don't know Dubai, London, and New York, uh, you can find an online school center in each of these cities. Uh, you can be in Dubai. Um, I don't know this week, and you can do two days online. You can go for three days into a center. Uh, the children can 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 socialize with other with other kids, uh, and 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 it's all augmented by by the platform, right? And then, and then you can say, okay, next week I'm in London, but there's a really cool center in London as well. There is a chemistry lab, so yeah. I'm going to sign up for it. I'm going to meet the kids in London as well. And and I think this also gives kids an idea of what what the, what the professional world really is like today right because yeah. we talk to people from uh, 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 malaysia from singapore from uh, the us and then yeah. and we work with all of these people yeah right uh on a daily basis so why should kids not do the same why should they not have a project with a kid from from japan and a kid from the us and they're all kind of working towards the same thing even if they're on different timelines and stuff um, yeah, well, the world changed and school didn't change with it. And I think this is this is kind of the problem that we're trying to solve. And it's, it's flexible working is a thing. Flexible schooling should also be a thing. Mm. And I think there is a fear that this uh, would make kids somehow less disciplined. Um, but what I've always found that is if you if you actually give students ownership of their education, they mostly grab it with both hands. They think, OK, I have some good. This is for me now. And they kind of understand its purpose a little bit mm. more. Um, and I think this is the door we want to kind of open and say, when we talk about flexibility, yeah, it's in terms of geographical location, it's in terms of time, but it's also in terms of content. It's in terms of what you want out of your education and because it's very, very different for every student. Um, and I think, you know, ultimately, like it, it's basically a, a schooling hub, right? A fully managed schooling hub is... If you want it to be, it's fully teacher-led and it is this learning experience. And eventually, once we go hybrid, it would be in person and online. I think uh, that's its, that our kind of maximum vision. But it also could be for students in school somewhere else that want to pick up a little bit of extra content and understand, you know, they like our content and they use it for revision. For others, it could be, well, we've built this community uh, and they just want to do the peer-to-peer -peer learning bit. They just want to communicate with people all over the world. There's no reason why they couldn't drop in our centers and make friends when they're on holiday or traveling. Um, for other people, it could be, I just want to get test ready and I need to be test prep. For others, it could be, I need advice on university help. I need advice on careers. So I think what we're saying is we built this solution that is a full, fully managed teacher-led schooling solution but we built it in such a way where all the individual pieces can be used to increase flexibility, increase relevance, increase access, and make sure that you know kids are really getting what they need out of their education. Okay, so we've been through this massive journey. We have gone through changes of mindset. We've gone through changes of understanding of what we're building. We set out to do something that would change the world and change the way education works. That's always been the goal. It remains the goal, but the way we're doing it has sort of been honed and evolved over time. If you could go back now to when we started this, what advice would you give yourself? Yeah. I would probably, I would probably want to want to launch 
sooner to be to be completely honest um just not just not to have this kind of anxiety building up right as we're going into into the you know august when we when we decided to 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 start selling um i was, I was you know part of me was quite worried like is is this yeah gonna work because we worked for it for such a long time so we are convinced right yeah managed to you know convince our investors our friends our family right everybody everybody, everybody believes in it right but i i want the true validation and again going back to the money thing you only get through validation when you have a parent who who go you know love this take my money right yeah so that's yeah. kind of i just wanted that ha moment right that uh, they love it they do love it right? yeah and, and we were uh, very professionalist about it right we wanted yeah. it to do everything I wanted it to be fully ready, and that was a big journey to actually go. Yeah. Well, we need an MVP. But I, I think, I think when you when you look back on anything, there's there's so many things that you that that you would have done differently, right? So I think, I think you know, going back, um, even though I knew that when you build a product, you have to get to MVP essentially as cheaply as possible and as quickly as possible launch it it either dies or you pivot or you know you either validate or you or you don't right but you find out early so so you don't end up wasting time and money um and that so 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 i would have probably done that a lot but i think we did have those validation experiences and i think we sometimes forget that that we we tested the wireframes with kids and they absolutely loved it they loved the fact that we were going for these 3d models and that Mm -hmm. was a really validating experience TikTok huge validation that content's going in the platform we know this works testing the long form content was big validation and then bootstrapping it and getting revenue from august uh was also validation so i think it is i think it's because we didn't launch that yes. on this kind of the subscription model that we want that feels like we've not validated but we had these little validation steps all the way through we've only really started development on this iteration in january so yes no, i think i think we've done we've done amazing and and also i tend to forget that we come from an from education background where we've seen uh you know families uh, uh, being educated in this in this way at a much much higher price point um obviously but we we you and i knew that this this was going it was going to work right yeah, uh, but I uh, sometimes you know I tend I tend to forget that. And again, you said I'm a, I I'm a money person, so I, uh-huh. I yeah, you want revenue. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but but now that's kind of you know it's out of the way. And uh, yeah, we started being revenue generating, and we're growing month on month. So that's that's uh, you know it's validation enough. Now I just want to launch the subscription based model. And yeah, absolutely kill it, and then. Well, that's exciting. Then I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. Sort of I, I think I think what you're thinking is we 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 evalu- we've had this little validation step, so we know what we're we're building. But we've not had this big, the the full app itself mm. is is you know it's fully functioning and people are buying subscription and, and and I feel nervous about that about launching that in January as well. But I think it's going to mm. be exciting we probably still won't won't have it for quite for quite a while because we're still there's still going to be so many iterations right oh Um, yeah and 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 you know i still see this as from this point onwards until we get um well full product i think it's going to be september of next year right all the areas of the platform open yeah everything working uh but i i think the full vision uh, we'll we'll only see what really became of this in in another two years from now. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, so that will be many iterations later and many lessons. And look, even in this one year of building, how much we changed and adapted, and and I think that's testament to hopefully our ability to actually do this because we mm-hmm. did change in the face of new information. And I think it's 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 this fine balance between knowing when to stick to your idea and say okay, my, the idea is great and, and and this is what I want to do and then also knowing when to pivot and one or the other is either one is not good, right? So right. if you if you keep pivoting, you're never staying long enough to validate something disruptive. But if you also just stay on the track and I think that's where the skill comes in and I think the fact that we're working with clients and the fact that they're loving what we're doing and the fact that the industry is now getting interesting now they can see a build of it 
is uh, is testament to doing that right. For me, I think if we, if, what I would go back and tell myself is I get bogged down in the detail because it's a really big project and we've got all these different areas and I get quite excited about it because having worked with kids, I know how all these different areas are going to be interacted with. I know this experience is going to be unlike anything that's out there um, at the moment. But the problem is when we go to an investor is, and we've talked about this a lot, is it, we can have a, a, a habit of, be, of being a bit scattergun, of being like, let's tell them everything and then find out what we'll actually do. And what's funny is having worked a lot in sales, I would never do that in a sale. Like I would wait for them to tell me their problem and then I would address their problem. And we, and I think because we were new to this pitch, we didn't quite do it that way. And I think now, now we're getting a bit more experienced and a bit more used to it. Um, that's something that we do really differently now. So we listen to them. And the great thing about it is everyone knows about education as an industry. Everyone has an education. Everyone has an opinion on it. So we know that anyone we sit in front of, we can talk to about it, get them talking, figure out what the pain point is. And then because what we're building is so big, we tell them how we're addressing that pain point. And that's been a much more effective strategy, I think. So I would go back and be like, don't get bogged down in the details. You guys are good at sales. It's the same thing. Yeah. True. Um, so we talked a lot about having actually started working with students and doing this kind of bootstrap version of online learning and self-led learning uh, through the virtual classroom. Um, and we started to have really good feedback from, from parents. Um, and one of the things that parents say to me quite a lot is, is around what you said earlier, which is this idea that uh, school shouldn't take seven, eight hours. And we've had parents come to us and say, you know, look, you've given my child their childhood back because they're now no longer too tired to keep skipping karate at the end of the day, which is something that they really love. And they socialize with all their friends here. Um, but, you know, when they've done a whole day of school, they just don't feel like it. And half the time they, they say no. Or, and so what, what I always think is really interesting is flipping this idea of the social um, problem on its head because at least in my experience and, and, and definitely validated in, in what we're doing since August, kids are more likely to go out and socialize and do these sort of more sports or social activities if the school day hasn't been quite so intense. And what we're doing is covering that same content. We're getting them just as prepared or even better in a much shorter space of time. Yeah. What do you yeah, think about absolutely. parent feedback? Um, well, I, I think this 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 uh, thing about um, around socializing is is um, is an interesting one, right? Because it's a question that we get. Well, it's a question that we get from everyone. Yeah, how are kids going to socialize? Um, and you know, we think there's a very simple answer to it, but uh, I don't think it's immediately obvious, right? Yeah, the fact that um, you know because this is so flexible and also it's it's is a lot more condensed, right? So we always talked about. And, and that's the reason why we worked with senior examiners in in, in developing the uh, the lesson content. We wanted to squeeze the juice from it, right? Yeah. So you you do the program, um, and you can you can get max grades, right? By by by, you know, just doing what's on the what's on the platform, um, and, and and not just that, you can go on a tangent and and, and explore a variety of content. Um, but it's actually because we're so flexible and and. The program is so condensed. The kids have, uh, you know, a lot more time to do what they want with their with their day, and especially in uh, in Dubai, where there's so many activities available mm. and so many clubs. Um, I think parents really start to see it once they start a program, yeah, uh, and they see it because they see it in their in their kids. They're they're less tired uh, and they're really excited. And you know, we've we've had uh, kids. If you if you if you remember that, you know, went around and told their friends, and then yeah, their friends wanted to join as well because they said, "My I, my school is so cool." You know, I'm doing this and that and that, and everything has an entrepreneurship angle, and I love my teachers. And yeah, well, it's not just the time, is it? I mean, that course that you're thinking about, the building mm -hmm. out that entrepreneurship program and actually making maths be maths for business and making English be English for All right. uh, well, space of writing and things like that. And and this was for a 12 year old. This student felt like they were treading water in school. And now this really excited. They're about to do our shark tank pitch in the new year, uh, which will be a lot of fun. And they're telling their friends about it because 
they're learning all those same skills that you're learning in school, but they're doing it in something they're really passionate about. So yeah, I'm excited about developing more things like that. Yeah, for sure. So thinking about advice and advice you would give yourself, if you were to go back and think about the journey you've been through in your whole life, you know, what would you tell kind of school age you, what would you tell 15 year old self, um, what bit of advice would you give? Buy Bitcoin. <laughs> no, I think it would be the I think I think that was more for for uh for when I was in, in, in university. Um I think going back to fifteen, I would just tell myself to stop stressing out, stop stressing out uh, you know, about um about school and, 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 and about results and, and I also stop pushing back so much, I suppose, because you know, it didn't really get me anything other than get me suspended constantly. The fact that I was protesting so much, like, you know, saying this, why do I need to learn this, uh, whatever particular subject, right? Because I don't like it. I don't have an interest in it. And it's just part of my curriculum. I will never like it. And well, I, yeah, I still don't, don't see how that particular subject, uh, helped me. It was something specific for, for, for Romania. Like, uh, I think it was civil education. Called oh, yeah, like PSHE in there. Uh... Well, I mean, it was it was just complete nonsense, right? Uh, so I would tell myself to stop to stop stressing out. I would tell myself that I have all the time in the world to achieve everything that I want to achieve, um, and that it's it's all out there. And I would tell myself to, you know, just really really think about what I what I really enjoy doing. You know, yeah. other than riding bikes, motorcycles, skiing, and doing uh, a range of extreme sports that you know. So, uh, I actually did um, ski as a as a pro um, back in back in Romania, but um, unfortunately I had an accident and kind of had to stop. And uh, also was never was never was never the best, right? I, I was never in the in the top three. I think my best result was like fifth or sixth in the in the country. And then my that's pretty good. Yeah, well, it's all well. My father told me because I, I remember he 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 used to tell me if you don't if you don't get on the podium this year, um, you know you should stop doing this. My father was actually a, a professional rower, so he 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 rowed for the for Romania in the I don't know world championship, whatever. And he he um, yeah, all the European champions uh, championships and so on. Uh, then he got an injury and 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 had to stop. But yeah, he was telling me like only the best make it and maybe mm-hmm. even the ones that get on the podium in Romania they're still not going to make it because you need to ski all the time right and you're only skiing in the winter um, yeah but anyway go to so, Japan uh, in summer uh, <laughs> well the, the, you know the oh, kids that, 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 that had a lot more funding and had schools that actually allowed them to do it were just going and, and, and skiing on a on an iceberg <laughs> um, so yeah but um, anyway um, I think I think I was I was really stressed in school, and then when I when I got to university, I just kind of got stuck on this idea that I need to pursue a career, um, but I never really allowed myself the freedom to you know to to be creative and to and to say yeah. okay you have time right think really well what it is that you want to do because you're gonna have to do it for a very long time from now on right and I think I I kind of just winged it in the end and business is actually what I enjoy doing and what I'm hopefully good at. Um, so, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, for me, I would ask my, I would tell myself to, to try everything. I think to, to explore more and not narrow my, my view of the world. Um, because I, I did throughout my education and the British education is kind of set up like this to, to sort of narrow you down. You have this broad GCSEs. Now, I, I said earlier that I, I did drama, I did music, I was really creative in the way I thought, and then I just did pure science and maths. And I would have liked to have kept some of those elements going. And then when I went to university, this became a big part of my identity. But I actually would rather, I would go back and I would tell myself to just keep that sort of wide view of the world open and keep the, you know, a broad knowledge base, which I think I, I try to do now as an adult. Um, but yeah, that would be that would be kind of my advice. So, um, thank you very much for uh, for sitting with me for so long and and discussing our entire journey. Um, 
this has been really interesting and hopefully people have found sort of little bits of nuggets of wisdom in it. Um, we are planning on doing this a lot more. So this is the first yeah. of many. So, well, we have these conversations over and over yeah. in, the, <laughs> in the office and we're actually stuck in the same room for, you know, 10 to 12 hours a day. So <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, I think it would be interesting to, to, to share this, uh, yeah. because it is, it is a very interesting and, and insightful journey. Yeah. So thanks to everyone for listening and, uh, we'll be back soon. Cheers. Sir.